I think you deserve a round of applause for making it to the end of this bonus session. So give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, hopefully by the end of this session, you will have learned something new and you'll be happy that you stayed. Because I want to talk about my favorite topic, NG template outlets, and typing them. So previously they weren't typable, but now you can type them. So I don't know if any of you have seen this talk back in 2019, where I talk about NG template outlets as being this great secret to customization and how they unlock all these great possibilities in your app. But time and time again, the question was, but can you type them? I, I like types. I like having red squiggly lines in my editor when I get it wrong. And that's where this talk comes in, because now we can type them. But if you're sitting here thinking, what is an NG template outlet? I've never heard of that before. I'll give you a quick overview, or you can go and watch the talk, because it's still on YouTube. So an NG template outlet is a powerful tool for creating customizable components. What you basically do is you define a template in your app, and you can define these template variables with this let syntax. And then you take that template, and you give it to another component. And then that component renders it, and then provides values to those template variables. So it's, it's this really powerful way of defining templates and code and HTML in one part of your application, passing it to a different part of your application, which has this context and knowledge of what needs to be rendered, and then it gets rendered there for you. So if we look at these steps, so step one, we define a template. So we're going to use the ng template tag here, and we label it as option template. So this is going to enable us to retrieve it um, later on. And then we've got these template, var template variables, so let shark and let id. So these are a way for us to extract information from the context, which is going to be provided to us, but use them in our template. So where you're defining your template, you don't have access to what that shark is going to be. And if, I'll just stop. if you're wondering why I'm saying shark, this is a follow-on from that talk where I made selectors for two of my sons, one for sharks, one for tractors. So it's not completely random. So once you've defined your template, we can then pass it to a shared one. So here we've got at my selector, and we're going to use um, the content child to extract the template. So here we define the template within the selector. And then in the selector itself, we use content child. We give it the label that we've used to get the reference. And so option template reference will then contain the reference to that template. And then this is within our shared component. We can then use ng template outlet to render that template. And here we can see we've also got this ng template outlet context where we pass it the option and also the index. So this is where the actual information about what we're going to render is provided. So as you can see, it then enables you to have this kind of client customization. So in client one, they've got this really heavy icon library but you don't need to have that in your shared component. That can just live in their template, but your shared component can render it for them. So you have this really nice way of separating for different clients a full template specification, but above and beyond what ng content can do with projection, you also then have different items. So for example, each shark can be rendered differently, um, which is where this feature becomes so powerful. But in 2019, there was an issue. You could easily write a template like this, where you say, let shark, but it's got an any type, and you can say anything wrong, and there's no type checking. So this was a really big blocker for some people. They were like, well, this is just a bit dangerous. You know, and I could run into issues where the template that I'm defining, the only way to test it is, I guess, to see what's actually rendered. And I think it's fair to say we've all got used to Angular being so good at te testing and checking our templates that this is a bit of a, a blocker. But now in 2023, we can. And also in 2022, it's not brand new. So this is how we're going to do it. 
So instead of using a label, we're going to use a directive to identify our templates. We're going to use an ng template context guard. So that's really the key thing to take away from this talk, that this thing exists, and you can use it to type templates. And then we're going to look at a more slightly more complicated use case of how you can use this with generic types. Um, and then finally, why you should use Angular 16 for this as well. So the first step, we're going to define a directive to identify our templates. So here, this is basically all you need to do for your directive. You give it a selector, which is going to be the option template attribute. So then on our ng template, basically, we've removed the hash. And so this is going to enable us to identify the template via the directive. So our content child gets updated to have the directive is what we're looking for. And we're going to read from that the template reference. So find the child component that has an option directive on it, and then read the template reference. And then this is where ng template context guard comes in. And so the bit I've screenshotted here is what's in the Angular documentation. And it doesn't really flush out how to use this. Um, but the way to think of it is um, it's a bit like a TypeScript type guard. So from the TypeScript docs, you can see we've got this method which says, is this a fish? And it's passing it a fish or a bird. And then you've got this pet is fish, which is basically saying, if this function returns true, then the type of this object that was passed in is a fish. And the ng template context guard follows a similar pattern. But the first thing to do is say, well, what is the interface that I want this to conform to? So we look at our ng template outlet context, and we've got this implicit option, and we've also got the index. So we can define our interface for our option context as being you know, dollar implicit. And we're going to say for now that we just expect every object to have a name, and then also the index. And then this is how we would use ng template context guard. So this is definitely a piece of code which I copy and paste all the time, as opposed to trying to write from memory. But the way to think about it is, again, like that type guard saying, well, where you find this option directive, if this function returns true, which it clearly does, then the context for that is this interface option context. And once you add that to your directive and update your template, you get type checking. So now there's no reason not to use ng template outlets. So that's great. But then what about generic types? Because if we've got this shared component, it's, we can't just assume that everything's going to have a name property. So we need to have more flexibility. Because at the end of the day, that is what we're using ng templates for, because they give us this flexibility. So we think, OK, generic types, I know how to do that in TypeScript. I'm going to add in my generic type, T item. So the implicit one, which is going to be the object, that's my T item. And then we're going to flow that through to our directive as well. So the directive is now generic. And we also add it to our guard. Now, just to make sure, this isn't a typo. T item and T context item are different. Because ng template context guard is static, it can't reuse the generic type that you pass into the class. So don't be confused why, when you try and do that and then it errors. Just give it a different name and Angular will take care of the rest. So you do that and then your types are broken again. Sharks reverted to any. And you're thinking, well, what have I done? I've just made these things generic. And that leads us into another topic which I've blogged about is whether does Angular support generics? And as you can see in this picture, maybe, it's not like JSX where you can give the component an actual TypeScript interface. The way that Angular works with generics is that it infers things from inputs which have a generic type. So that means we need to add an input to our directive. So now we go back to our directive, and we add this options input, which now uses our T item generic. And so once again, Angular is going to do the linking for us of T item to T context item to get the typing working again. And then we come back to our template, and we provide the sharks 
list to this options um, input. And then your generic typing is working. So we've managed to fix it, but then I think it is worth calling out that we're now adding more work onto where we use and where we define these templates. So we're adding a list of sharks to a template which is just responsible for rendering one shark. So it's potentially a bit confusing. It might be something which, if you're creating a shared component to be used across lots of teams, it's something that you might need to call out and say, well, this thing is just to do with typing. But then I think you know, the benefits of having you know, the correct typing in your interface are probably worth the situation, well, worth this extra config. And depending on your template, it might be possible that the value you pass there is actually used and is relevant. Now, you probably might be aware that there's an alternative structural syntax for using ng templates as well. So you can do it something a bit more like this, where you have a container and you'll say the options, which is mapping to our, um, our directive, is the sharks and as shark and as index. But if you go down this route, there's even more changes that you'll need to do, which I'm not going to attempt to walk through now. But I've got a repo, um, ng template outlets there, which has examples of both of these approaches. So feel free to take a look at that and see which one fits you. But then if we also think about Angular 16, thanks to thanks think Thomas, um, he submitted this PR so that where you define your ng template outlet context, that can be fully typed as well. So pre before Angular 16, this wrong property wouldn't complain about, but if you're using Angular 16, it will now tell you your context doesn't support this. So again, we're getting into even more strict typing around these items. And for further reading, Thomas has got a great blog about this, which is where I've actually learned about this myself, um, and then applied it to the previous context. And that's actually finished. I've been much quicker than I was expecting. But there we go. So go type your templates. <laughs>